I'm at this this point where I have so many ideas that I don't know which ones to pursue. And with this painting, the concept the concept sketch to me was one I passed up over my previous paintings because it. I don't know it just didn't jump out to me so with this I really worked it and reworked it over and over until I got it to what it was and even then I still changed it so it really was just like a continuous evolution of the concept as I made it into a painting and uh, I don't really have a lot to say about this one as I said I'm still working smaller But I had got to thinking about my artist's name and what maybe someone would refer to me as. Um, I do go by Scarred by Illusion. It is sort of, I don't know, a, a manifestation of a lot of creative output. But it reminded me of my previous video that I had done about book to movie adaptions in a weird roundabout way because my brain works in a in a way that I don't understand even um but I've been reading this book the women of weird tales I and it's a it's a compilation of short stories by female pulp writers like so, short story horror stories by women but a lot of these women have pen names that were male because they didn't think they would succeed in the profession as a woman and I have another book kind of in relation to the Women of Weird Tales. I think I got it for one of my birthdays. I don't know. But it's just interesting to me because there's a a woman. She is connected to the, what is it, House on the Hill, Hill House. And there's that other one. I can't remember what it is. It was on Netflix. I, I hated it. She wrote this book. <laughs> called We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which was adapted to a movie. Both the book and the movie are horrible. Mercat was a poisoner. Plot twist. It's not a plot twist the whole time. It's so obvious that she she was maybe, I don't know, sociopathic. When you start committing crime because your family sends you to bed without dinner, that you, you, you have, it's indicative of a deeper, of a deeper problem. But anywho... <laughs> that's one of the that's one of the few times that I'm like the the movie wasn't better than the book because the book wasn't good like the source material itself was flawed so the movie was was doomed to fail in my eyes it's on Netflix it was on Netflix I don't know they shift stuff around and it's just like what is it the other movie the book adaption that I think uh what is it what is it something Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I tried to read that book. I couldn't get through, I want to say maybe the first 50 pages. Because that boy is actually very dislikable in the book. So, in the adaption, it's better because you don't know him. <laughs> and I've actually never seen the whole movie. I'm not good at watching movies, actually, because I am what my sister has deemed a busybody. I just like to do things. I like to stay busy. I like to multitask if I can. But similarly, since I'm on the vein of books and movies, Matilda and Coraline are basically the same girl. And I'm surprised that Tim Burton has not remade Matilda. I'm not even for all the remakes because I feel like it's a waste of money. And we should, like, invest in new stories and new creators and directors and, you know, storytellers. But really... A Tim Burton remake of Matilda would be great because Matilda had powers on like Coraline. I know it probably wouldn't be claymation, but if they did it, I would watch it. I've been thinking that for like years and years and years. <laughs> and again, because my brain is I'm jumping all over the place. But how female writers of this of the weird and wacky tales or the women of weird tales they 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 use male pen like pen names of men, Anne Rice because I, I really love Anne Rice. Her name her birth name was Stan, but she started going by Anne, and I'm like the irony of it. Other people are like you know what, I'd be some more successful as a writer. I think that's like applies to like J.K. Rowling. I think there's some other women who also still do that to this day, where it's like I want my work to be palatable for everybody, so I'm gonna keep it gender neutral. I think. 
personally for me, my art doesn't really reflect me. Because I've seen those people that do the Instagram. I don't have an Instagram anymore, so I'm never going to do it. But, like, the art and the artist. I don't think that if you looked at my art, you would necessarily think I was a female. Or a woman, if you will. Uh, I don't think my art really reflects me as a person. So when other artists do, like, self-portraits, I was like, I can't do that. I've learned <laughs> that I really don't know what I look like. I don't have a good sense of myself, like, my appearance. Uh, to an extent, I am a little bit body dysmorphic. <laughs> but I, I'm better than what I have been. I actually think I've kind of um, overcome it because I'm just realizing my body's natural inclination is to wither. But uh, I, I uh, if you watch this and you listen to me ramble, please consider liking, subscribing. Although, I feel like if you've seen one of my painting videos, you've seen all of them. But don't let that, that stop you from subscribing if you want to subscribe. Um, consider sharing it to anybody who maybe likes horror or weird stuff. And also, play, m comment maybe if you have an opinion on whether my video should be longer or shorter. I try not to make them any longer than what they have to be. But I don't know, like, so that often, like, over <laughs> three minutes to me is maybe too much. At the max. Eight minutes, I think, is good. I don't know. Comment how you feel about video links. I, I would appreciate any feedback. If it's garbage, comment it's garbage. You know, leave a scathing comment, you know. Um, if you liked anything, you can comment that too. of my inner torment on display right next to the falafel cart. Oh.